Hello? No need for shoes, we got fishing news, interviews, and reviews. Forget the drama, we're live on the Casa. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another live from the 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 Casa. Um, today we got a great show. New graphics, new graphics. Donald, I have some new sunglasses sent being sent to you this week. Two from uh, I don't know what happened to the first pair, but I got some new ones sent to you. Um, but we have some new stuff going on, new graphics, and uh, glad to see you guys here with us. Lots of things we're going to talk about today, including all the things that you see over there on your, I don't know what side it's on, I guess that'd be your right side. We're going to talk about ICAST 2020. We'll talk about Major League Fishing, what's going on with them, the rumors that are happening, um, and, and some other stuff in there. We'll talk about the Bass Elites because what we talked about a couple weeks is now coming to fruition. After that, we'll talk about the new products that 13 Fishing is coming out. So you're going to see them before. Well, they probably have put them out there on the internet. But if you haven't seen them, we're going to show you what, what's coming up. We'll also talk about the new stuff from Berkeley, too. And then we'll have a YouTuber's creator shout out. So I hope everyone's doing good. It's been a crazy time. Uh, I should mention, you know, everyone keeps asking, when are we going to be back on the air? I'm just going to keep it real. I don't ever see that ever happening ever again. I just don't see it. Um, I think this is a great plat plat platform that we can use and create good show and good content. And if we produce it like this one and better, I think it's as good, if not better than what we were getting up, up at the radio station. And... Not to mention the radio station actually called today and said, look, you're a good 60 to 90 days from possibly coming in. And really, that's a whole year. And that really that really sucks. So we're going to try to do it this way. Mike and I have some ideas, and we're going to try to work through them and, and build some stuff. But we've got some really good ideas. So it's it's coming on down the line. It's just probably not as fast as some people want. And that's just how it is. Before we go, and if you don't know, the Star Tournament is ongoing. It started July 1st. Uh, if you don't know about the Star Tournament here in Florida, the CCA Star Tournament is a great tournament. You uh, you pay for your your membership for CCA, and then it's like 10 or 12 20 bucks. But there's over $500,000 in prizes to win. I'm not joking. You find one of those tagged redfishes, you could win. And I'm not joking. Here's the list. Find a tagged redfish. There's a tagged redfish category. There's a kayak division. There's a trash division, and there's more. You could win a Contender 22, a Pathfinder 2200, Hughes Redfisher, Carolina Skiff, Salt March Skiff, Piranha Rasco, which is a 14-inch if you win the Snook Contest, and they're giving away $25,000 for youth scholarships. So not to mention... There's a $500 bonus if you have a tackle webs or a thrash can on your boat for one of those categories. So if you're interested in finding out more information, go to ccaflstar.com and you'll find out. I've got lots of notes and more. So I should be running commercials in the middle of this. So why don't I, while I run a quick commercial, that'll get me ready for our first topic. And that is going to be in the conservation vision. I am. Oh, nice. Good job, Donald. I'm going to run a... Well, maybe I'm not. I don't know where the commercials are. Yeah, it, would, it would probably have been a good idea to have that ready, wouldn't it? I mean, it makes sense. Uh, the new graphics have got me all messed up. Anyway, okay, that's all right. Let's go right into it. Who needs that? ICAST 2020. Uh, if you don't know what's going on with ICAST 2020, they start our virtual ICAST next week. Um, now, is it going to be what we are normally used to doing? No. There's there's no question that the change in the American Sport Fishing Association ICAST show that normally we go to here in Orlando is going to be completely upside down. But can it be good? I'm I'm hopeful. I'm 
optimistically hopeful, but it doesn't mean it's going to happen really the way that we normally do it. You know, normally we go to the, the ICAST show and we walk around and we're able to see people and meet people and, and renew friendships and, and stuff like that. But this year that isn't going to happen. This year uh, everything is going to be done here uh, on our computers. Now I know ICAST, and well, it, usually ICAST is set up with booths. Each, each uh, tackle person or sponsor or whoever or industry person has their own booth. And you go to booth to booth and you can see all their new stuff. This year, that will all be done virtually, and uh, it's already actually started to come out. What you're going to see with 13 Fishing in Berkeley is they are pre-releasing some of this. Not really pre-releasing, but pre-showing us what is going to be available for y'all to buy and for y'all to check out. So hopefully it's it'll be a, a good, hopefully it's good. I'm not sure how it's going to be attended or how well it's going to be attended. Uh, hold on. Not to mention... There's a lot of companies that are actually doing their own thing, and I'm not even sure if that's the right thing to do. Uh, it, it, you would think that with the the way this iCast and the way things have worked in the in the industry, that it would have been something they just offered for free to, to keep the morale and to keep sales and everything up, but that isn't how it works. Some companies, if you had like over 14 or 15 products, it was going to cost you up to $10,000 to do it virtually so i know tackle webs here we have uh the new commercial that you just saw that was part of our hype stuff that we were doing and also a new catalog and a bunch of other stuff uh and a new website that's about to be posted too so it's one of those things that uh it's going to be different but we're going to try our best to get as much content that we can to help you guys see the new stuff just like we do normally we're going to have uh, berkeley is going to be calling in uh, Berkeley is going to call and, uh, we're going to do some stuff on here on live and, and we're going to, we'll have some of our friends call in and we'll be able to see and talk to, um, talk to them to find out more about their products. But you know, that's, that's coming up. I mean, I know for Berkeley, I was number 20 on the list to get an interview. So, but I'm going to try to do the stuff with Berkeley myself and, you know, we'll see what happens. So. That's that's what's happening with iCast 2020. And I'm trying to what I'm trying to do if if this feels a little bit different and a little, it kind of feels a little rushed to me right now and maybe I just need to slow down. Um, I'm trying to do this like we normally would with the radio show. I'm going to have segments segmented out so that we can talk about those things. Or if you have a question or something, we're going to talk about those as as this whole thing goes on as my computer screen freezes. Next coming up if you don't know major league fishing man the rumors have been been going rampant if you watch luke duncan's video the other day and other people he had a uh, a a really crazy um he had a really crazy uh rumor that i, I to be honest i don't want to share i i feel like it's not something i should share um only because i know it's a rumor uh, and it's not even a true rumor. There, there's been some stuff that's been happening around in uh, inside of Major League Fishing in the last few weeks. And, you know, I just went right to the source and asked. And, and the rumor is completely, completely false. But more than that, what's happening, as a, someone else shared something on Facebook, more than that, this week... Uh, Major League Fishing is has their last regular season tournament on Sturgeon Bay, and that's a smallmouth uh, smallmouth fishery. And quite honestly, it could be an epic, epic, epic fishing tournament. You know, right now we don't have any sports, so we kind of want as much anything that we can get. Hi, Bubba. Hi. Do you want to come in and say hello to everybody? Say hi. Tell them what you do all day. I play. <laughs> and scream. And everything else. <laughs> uh, so, yes, Major League Fishing will be at Sturgeon Bay this week. And it should be, it could be absolutely ridiculous. Are you an iPad, Bob? Mm -hmm. I love you. Love you. Um, so, 
if you are, uh, it'll start, I think, starts in a few days, I think in three or four days. If you're a smallmouth bass fisherman and you, or you just want to watch, I really think that this could be the best tournament they have. And here's, and here's why, uh, I'll, I'll tell her everyone. I'll tell Thomas. She said hi. Here's why they at one point in time they they've you know they've they've upped the minimum of the 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 size of the bass that they have to have. They have a two pound minimum. There could be a possibility that they even up that more for this tournament because they've been catching some unbelievable stud smallmouth, and I'm talking flat out studs. There's a good chance you're going to see five to six pound smallies, and those are pigs. But here's the thing. I think if you know, if you've watched any fishing here recently or, or if you watched some of the content that's been happening during this COVID, this whole COVID craziness, one of the people I would keep my eye on, especially since it's a shortened season, I would keep my eye on Kevin Van Dam. He just knows how to catch smallmouth all the time. And he is, I think he has a great opportunity to do good this, well, this week. And I want to see him do good because I want to see Kevin hoist that trophy and win again because I think it's I think having Kevin in the, Kevin in the industry is one of the best things. But there's another storyline that we're going to have to keep very good track of. And the storyline is, well there's two storylines. Even better would be to have if Kevin couldn't win, to, would be to have the amazing Aaron Martins win. Yes, Aaron Martins is back after just ringing the bell and having his chemotherapy done. Aaron Martins will be fishing this week. Now, remember one thing. He's still been able to fish and do some stuff, but this is an area where drop shotting and, and light cast, light lines, and and doing all that, Aaron could, this could be just, there could not be a better story for Aaron to win this thing. But let's be, let's just keep it real. The best part of the story is that Aaron's back. And Aaron is one of the good guys in this industry. He's honest, and he is he's a very good friend of ours. I've spent numerous hours with Aaron. Not, not only talking to him as a, uh, a media person, but I've been able to spend three or four hours just talking fishing strategy with Aaron. And it was one of, if not the best part, I hate how this hat rides sideways. It was one of the best things that has happened in my little fishing bubble. It was my media bubble. So there's the first thing. But the other second amazing, I mean amazing storyline that's going to be happening. There's four. Yeah, there's four. Four people are competing, are within 12 points of Angler of the Year. Now, this is the last. this is the last one. This is the last tournament. So they're going to have their super tournaments, and those super tournaments are great. But four guys are going to be competing for probably that Angler of the Year. And not only Angler of the Year, but also the Red Crest Cup that we're going to have next year in February or March um, in Tulsa that the Red Crest is going to be doing. Um yeah, Ike is another good one. So the four guys you need to watch out for, Jordan Lee, who's on a tear. I mean, Jordan just won. Um, really great young angler. Probably, we, I mean, there was an article by Shaw about the that we're seeing something that has never been seen ever, and that's Jordan Lee and Jacob Wheeler. And Jacob Wheeler's in within that points too. The four guys we need to watch for for Angler of the Year, Jordan Lee, Ott Defoe, Jacob Wheeler, of course, and our boy Fletcher Shryrock. Now, if you don't know Fletcher, Fletcher is um, just been Mister Consistency this year. All the other guys have won a tournament, so they've got that hundred points to start off. Fletcher has been the most consistent angler out there, and Fletcher grew up in Ohio, and really has a great chance of pulling off something quite quite amazing. Now, if you remember years ago, he was in the Bass Elites. He always was teetering on either not qualifying or just squeaking in. No offense to Fletcher. Um, now he has a chance after two years of being the angler of the year. And I know personally that that is something that really Fletcher wants to do. Fletcher really wants to win. He really, really wanted to win Okeechobee. But this is a great opportunity for him to 
to show just how great of an angler he is. If you don't know Fletcher, Fletcher used to be an old uh, motorcycle rider. He and his brother Hunter. Uh, Hunter is in the elites. Fletcher's in the thing. Fletcher's, uh, Fletcher and Hunter are just both great guys. Jordan Lee is my guy. Uh, but it, it's going to be a great storyline. So the storylines, smallmouth fishing. We, I mean, we could see we could see five to seven pounders. Imagine a seven pound smallie. I mean, shut your mouth. That would be ridiculous. Aaron Martin's coming back. That's two amazing storylines. And then the third, really, there's four. Third is angler of the year. And then who makes that Red Crest Cup? Because 40 anglers will then compete for, uh, will be able to go to the tournament championship at the beginning of next year. So amazing, amazing storylines for this month, for this week's tournament on the Bass Elites up there on Sturgeon Bay. And it's a, uh, from what I understand, it is a smallmouth capital. There's guys that have just been saying it is just on fire with smallmouth. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, it should be really, really good. Seven pound Somali. Yep, I'm telling you, Craig, that would be, imagine a seven pound Somali. That would be stupid. That would be absolutely stupid. Next, let's get into the elites as I change graphics and you, I shouldn't even let you see that. Um, the Bass Elites was all hyped up. We talked about it last, uh, maybe it was last week. We talked about, you know, the Bass Elites are going to, to, they have three consecutive tournaments in New York. And it makes no sense why they would have three consecutive tournaments in New York. But obviously, matters. But as we talked about, there was a possibility that uh, that they could be canceled. And I think I c took a little bit of grief from another podcast saying how I was spreading rumors as of this afternoon. Let me get over here to my email. Where is my email? Cayuga Lake Bass Series event has been canceled. Will smack my ass and call me Sally. Bass officials announced they will cancel the Bass Elite at Cayuga Lake scheduled for July 14th through 17th uh, in the village of Union Springs, New York. And the plan is to reschedule the tournament for an, uh, at another fishery later on in the season. Hmm. Hmm. Something, huh? If you don't know, New York, last week, I'm reading this, last week, the state of New York released guidelines for professional sports competitions, which include diagnostic testing and protocols for daily health screenings for all athletes and staff. And that's why they're not going there. I think there's not, the Bass sent out an email to all their elite anglers. There was not only a chance of this one being canceled, but the next two. And it's really funny because they, they, they sent out this, and then they sent out lots of props and and stuff about how Bass was going to be on ESPN 2 for over 60 hours during those three tournaments, and now one's been canceled. Sometimes you shouldn't talk before you, you start to walk. I mean, they can't do anything about this. I know they want to have the tournament, and quite honestly, I want to see the elites have the tournament too, so hopefully they're able to reschedule it because we need this stuff right now. Honestly, the the how they have it on the Bass on uh, ESPN2 is the best. I think it's a better format uh, than Major League Fishing. I enjoy watching it, but I'm not, you know, right now they don't want... If they were to have that tournament, they couldn't even have fans. And then what happens? The Bass Elites just does the same thing as the as MLF. They have the tournament, and then you don't have any weigh-ins? No, no, no. Now! Now! That cannot happen. Keep it strong. We need to have those elite. We need to see those bass cross the, cross the stage. I cannot watch tournaments that don't have... More of the, the weigh-ins. I like to see. I like to hear. I like to know how they fish. I want to know what they're doing. <sighs> okay, Sally. I don't know what that means, but can you say Gunnersville? I think they'll go to Gunnersville too. It makes sense to go to Alabama. 
It makes sense. It makes sense to go any place where they can be close to where their their main offices are, and their main offices are in Alabama. So Gunnersville would be good. I'd like to see him come down to Florida, but I doubt that'll happen. I'd like to see him go to Texas. You want to know what even better? I'd like to see him go someplace where it, we haven't seen the fishery. I'd like to see him go. Why not take this opportunity and go west? A couple years ago, the anglers were pissed off that there was two West Coast things, and bass had to reschedule all their stuff. This is the time now to go. You want to know, guys, we, we can go west and, and showcase some of the great fishing out there. Because let's be honest, California, you're right, Jason Beck said it, California would be wonderful. You know the size of the bass some of those guys catch year-round in California? It would be absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, the weigh-ins are fun. You're right, Craig. I, I I hope they're able to reschedule it. I'm disappointed that they got ahead of this already, but I understand that they need to do it. Um, it would be fun to see them to reschedule and see them go someplace really cool where they can catch some giant, giant fish. So um, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I mean, we don't have any say in it. But I, I'd be honest, California and Texas would be great. Texas has some really outstanding fishing i i actually need to go over to texas and just fish um conroe and and some of those other places and i know we'll go to next year's uh, icast will be over there and i'm sure we're i'm sure i'm heading to the icat i mean i'm sure i'm heading to the classic over there excuse me the classic will be over there um Oh, you think New York is a pain? California, they, you want to? They probably couldn't reschedule in California either. You want to? There's so many hot spots going on right now. I don't think they re, could reschedule anywhere. I mean, the reason why? Hold on. The reason why Major League Fishing is able to do what they're doing? Nobody shows up. Nobody shows up for the Major League Fishing stuff. That's the 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 truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. There's nobody that shows up for those Major League Fishing stuff. I went out to Okeechobee. I think I was the only media person out there at Okeechobee. Maybe there was one other person. I think I saw J.P. DeRose. And I don't know if I'd consider him media or if I'd consider him with Shimano. So um, I'm not sure if I was the only one. Here in, in, in Oke um, not Okeechobee, here in Toho. I didn't see anybody media oriented. I saw a lot of people who were, oh, maybe I did. I think I saw Todd Fuller or some other person. So uh, there's, there, you know, there's some some great stuff, you know, and let's just hope they're able to reschedule. It. Okay, going to our next one. Let's talk about the new products. I think this is why most people want to see this. We have our first look at the new fishing products from 13 Fishing. I've taken some video, some very little, one very little video. Well, I say that and now I couldn't find the video a second ago. Let me just go to something real fast. Episode 12, videos. Yes, I do. Um, Yamaha outboards. Yamaha, the best of all time. Um, so the new products coming out. So like we talked about ICAST 2020, the virtual thing. Some of these people have already put some stuff out and I wanted to show you now I don't have these products in hand but I can show you graphics of exactly what it is so let's start off by looking at the new jabber jaw and I will show you just a quick video of what the jabber jaw is so here you go So I didn't want to take the whole video because it was like two and a half minutes long and really it didn't have much to say. But if you haven't seen the new Jabberjaw, the Jabberjaw reminds me of the new bait from, what is that called? Six Sense. And it is the Access. Let me tell you a little bit about the Jabberjaw. The Jabberjaw is what they say has more noise, less filling. This bait is an unclassified, is un classifiable as anything we've ever created as we hit the mold the mute button on loud and furious the chattering bill is rigged inside the full metal jowls which give a roaring whatever as it bangs side to side 
introduce your local fish to new level of chaos. It's f- uh, finished off with VMC black nickel hooks, and this bay will land more high fives and fist bumps than a game of beer pong. Some specifications. The Jabber Jaw provides erratic swimming action. It's got patent pending metal cheeks provided enhanced clicking noise. It has 3D hol- holographic 3D eyes, VMC black nickel hook and ultra high definition paint finishes i don't know how many uh how many of those are how many colors are going to be available but that's one of those baits that is going to be released in five days now that bait is really 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 close to the new six cents access now the six cents we do have the access in hand and i'm working on the closer look right now but we'll get we'll get some of these from 13 fishing and we'll check them out and see how they they work these are kind of like if you look at that bait because i'll put it up again that bait if you notice the front has a metal um lip and that metal lip actually goes side to side like this so of course i don't have a crankbait anywhere near me when i say this so that crankbait is going to go back and forth like this as it's going through the water. And as it goes back and forth, it's going to make that same noise, that same amazing noise that's with the uh, a chatterbait. So they're kind of putting this thing into like a crankbait, but it's a, got the chatterbait sound. So it'll be really interesting to see how well this works, uh, what the, the process is, and also how, how weird, uh, how close it is to the access because really the access has been the single hardest bait to get a hold of on the market and i'm not joking um six cents released a bunch to to uh the the academy stores and they completely sold out in minutes and i'm not joking in minutes i have been on six cents ass to get some of them and they did send me three and I have, I'm going to probably give one away at some point, but right now, this is another bait that looks, that looks really close. Next, coming to this year's, this year, or hopefully we're going to see it, from 13 Fishing, is the new Shadow Spin. Now, if you look at the Shadow Spin, we'll take a little minute, minute to look at this. You can see that it's got like a plastic tail, but a hard body, but then it's got the prop at the front. When you take the ultimate application of finesse techniques, develop and refine them into one package, this is exactly what comes out. It's all business in the front and with a custom machined aluminum prop and a downright party in the back. That's what she said. With a subtle reg tail, uh, paddle tail, that shreds a whole new riff in the spy game. The metal prop entices vibration and action. It's perfectly balanced to enhance shimmy, uh, for shimmying and a fall soft, a soft fall, a wedge tail for improved action. Of course, 3D holographic eyes, VMC uh, treble hook, and ultra high definition paint finishes. The bait will not twirl. The bait will go side to side, so you'll have that prop to spin in the front. The the middle bait, that's the the plastic part of that, will wobble a little bit, and then your tail will flop back and forth. If you look at the, this is one of the baits. I actually, I'm actually looking more forward to this bait than I am the Jabber Jaw at this point in time because I see a, a need for this, and it'll be a top water bait. But also, I think it'll be a top water bait. I'm, I don't know. We'll see. But that is the new uh, Shadow Spin from Thirteen Fishing. Next and last, they actually call that the Mullet. By the way, the uh, the the spin, the Shadow Spin. Put this one back. Last but not least. Thought I got my stuff in in missed order. Last but not least, from 13 Fishing is the new Spin Walker. Now, if you've seen, this kind of reminds me of the Chase Baits bait, but not to the level. Uh, If you like walk the dog dog style baits, and uh, this is a long-weighted upgrade. This will be a top water bait, and uh, they say that all your answers, you'll have all your answers. We've added a bottom position prop and clacker that gives off a begilding sputter, whether twitch side to side or retrieve directly. Local fish become enamored and consumed by the need to attack. This spear is tipped with VMC 
premium coated hybrid treble hooks that make penetrating tough mouth uh, species child's play. It has a metal prop and clacker providing enticing noise and vibration. It has ultra uh, high definition paint finishes, 3D holographic eyes. It's perfectly balanced to walk the dog. And then of course those great, uh, those great treble hooks. It's like a top water, but better. So coming from 13 fishing is the new spin walker. Pretty excited to get that one too. So 13 fishing has some great, great products uh, coming out here in the next. Well, this is for the 2020. There'll probably be some other stuff that comes out, but this is what they're saying is coming up for this next year. If you want more information, you go to 13fishing.com, and I have reached out to them, and I am hoping that they'll come on and do uh, come on and, and do the live show with us. So cool for that. You can throw that away now. Next, and this is hopefully hopefully you guys like this. Hopefully you guys are able to see these new products before um, you know before you buy them and get a little bit better opportunity to check them out. And and if you're interested, by all means, check out their stuff. The Jabberjaw will be out next week. Hey, by the way, I'm on four months of no soda. I think it's four months and seven days. It might be five months and seven days. How about that? Only water. Cheers. Okay. Next. Next. Do you guys like that, by the way? Do you like that I do these the, like that? Do you want to see these new baits and this stuff? I'd really like to know, by, by all means. Um, I'd really like to know. Next, we're going to talk about the new stuff from Berkeley. Now, you know, Berkeley is one of the best, uh, the best stuff, best companies out there. They don't have a lot of products coming out this year. But I can tell you the amount of colors that they have coming out for some of their products and some of the SKUs, man, you cannot, I'm not joking. This is, I'll show you this. That's, that's just a, that's all the colors for one. Look at this one. This is the grass pig, which I'm about to show you in a second. Look at all the colors they have for that. There's easily 22, 20, 22 colors there. They, they don't just come out with like four or five. They might as well make all of them. Um, so Berkeley has what they're calling five or there's like five or six major, uh, thank you. So it is bad for the boats. Uh, they have five or six, uh, major new products. So we're going to start off by talking about, and now I got them all mixed up piece of junk. The new hollow belly from Berkeley, the Berkeley power bait hollow belly. So there, these are going to be available in HD True Color. It's not an, it's, it's an, not, it's an older lure, but they're bringing it back with new shape and softness. This spray has great action and fat uh, on fast and slow re retrieved, and you can rig it as a line through jig head or a weighted EWG uh, rig. These baits are going to go from six, seven bucks to eight bucks. So quite honestly good price six or seven eight eight bucks that's not bad now i don't know how many you'll get in the pack but probably like the new uh, power bait ones i think i have those usually you get five per pack so not bad not bad that's the new hollow belly berkeley bait power bait and then they're going to come in three two three fifteen sixteen different colors i don't know if that you can see that there 16 new colors next is going to be the grass pig something similar to the last one power bait grass pig if you don't know about this they're going to have these in high def true color this was actually designed by bobby lane but he's taking it to the next level um they will be the body and tail creates an irresistible wiggle. They're very versatile swim bait. You can rig them with an EK, EWG, Florida rig, offset wide gap, or even a jig head. Now, these ones, I don't know how many they're going to cost, but these are only three, $4 to $5, $3.99 to $4.99, and they're going to have 22 new colors of the Power Bait Grass Pig. 
I know this is hard to see, but there's some of the colors that you'll be able to see. I don't know if you can see that real good, but there's some of the colors from Berkeley Grass Pig. And made by Bobby Lane. You know they're going to work down here in Florida. No joke. They're going to flat out smoke fish down here in Florida. Next, let's see if I have it right. I think I do. Next comes the Berkeley Power Pop Frog. The new Power Pop Frog has a super high flotation frog not seen by any North American bass. It has a wide cup mouth that gives extra surface dif- disturbance. Recessed hook pocket uh, keeps the Power Pop weedless. The Power Pop 70 has an internal chamber that enables rattles to be added or removed. That's kind of cool. And it's equipped with the Sharp Fusion 19 hooks. Those ones are going to just come in. It looks like they're just going to be in um, just one size, it looks like, from what I can see. But it's going to come in a good 12 fantastic-looking colors. All you frog fishermen are probably really, really like that. There are the colors. That one is going to be pretty sweet right off the bat. I see that as a winner. Next, another frog. If you like the frogs, here comes the new Power Bait Buzz and Speed Toad. Serrated feet buzz and cut the water surface, creating strike provoking water disturbance and sound. Ultra realistic look and lifelike HD true colors for the ultimate frog fishing experience. They have unique perpendicular hook pointer keepers, protect single hook. And double hook frog rigs allowing you to fish in all structures. And it has a belly slot for extending leading edge to keep the bait from sliding up the shank for even more reliable hookups. Sturdy body for fishing in heavy color and catching multiple fish per bait. Now these ones are going to be um, $5 to $6. $4.99 to $5.99. I think the HD colors will probably be the, the other ones. But uh, you'll see right now they have a good 12 great colors with, I think, five of them being HD. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. There's a lot of frogs out there. Honestly, I cannot remotely tell you how many frogs are sitting next to me that I need to do reviews on? I'm not joking. You can see it back there. One of the upcoming closer looks will be that Molex Sneaky Evo frog. That one is ridiculous good. I've got the new um, the new Z-Man frogs that uh, are spectacular. i got the walking and the popping, and I've already fished with those both of those quite a bit. Both of those are very good, good ones too. And I'm going to probably do, I've got a whole series that I was, I've been trying to, to do slowly but surely about what kind of frog really is the best frog. Because if you know, if you've ever worked a frog, there are certain ones that you can really fish really well. Certain ones walk better than others. And if you didn't know why why that small one doesn't work as well as that giant one, it's because there's there's more surface of that big one so that it, it'll work better. So getting a small one that works good is really important. So I, I'm, I actually put... In, in the case of the video that I've been working on, I actually put three that are in a different spectrum of costs. And we, we find out, does the, the one that costs 4 bucks catch as many fish as the one that costs $16.99? And I would give you the answer, but I'm still working on the video. I've been working on that video for three months. Three months. Because I want to give it every all the, the, all the baits the same opportunity in each one. So uh, the scum frogs are ridiculous. The scum frogs in the in the, the video. Okay, last but not least, from Berkeley is the new Fritzside Junior and Biggin. Now, if you don't know, the Junior Biggin profiles are going to be available in five size models. Classic flat side profile mimics a variety of species that creates the most flash of any Berkeley crankbait. Tight balsa-like thumping actions for tough conditions. 
integrated flash disk, which they've trademarked, improves tracking stability and accuracy and gives the bait true balsa-like action. And it casts even better on bait casting setups. What? Casts well even on bait cast. Okay, that's why that, I just need to learn how to read. Casts well even on bait casting setups. And it's equipped with the sharp Fusion 19 hook. Sorry. Uh, you got to see that. So that is the new Fritz side Biggin, Junior and Biggin. Those are going to cost $8.99. So that is another great bait. I don't know how 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 uh, how far those dive down, but they got a pretty good, pretty nice size lip on them. So I imagine that everybody up north or that third one on the bottom there probably dives two to four feet. So it should be another great bait. So those are the new Berkeley baits that'll be coming out here in the next year. Trying to give you guys some new stuff. I'm trying to do this a little bit different, to be honest. It's a little awkward, to be honest. I don't know why. It's a little awkward. But I'm trying. Uh, all the Berkeley stuff does look great. Um, yeah, John Cox won 100 grand on the Fritz side. So, so Hank, thank you for reminding me. So I talked to John after the tournament, and he's like, the Fritz side is, he he says, the he's never used a bait that's, that's, worked so perfectly out of the box that he doesn't have to be tuned or anything he says as soon as you put that bait hits the water it tracks exactly where you casted it you know sometimes when you throw a crankbait or something like that they kind of verge to the right or they verge to the left because the nose might be slightly off a little bit here and there but he says the fritz side doesn't do that at all as soon as it hits the water it tracks exactly exactly where you go and that is that is money in the bank i mean he he will uh he will have it for sure what will come first, the frog video or the cure for COVID-19? The frog video. I, I technically, I could finish the frog video. I know the, I know the results. I think you know the results too, Les, because I think you talk, I talked to you about this. But yes, uh, I'll, I'll try to get it up. I actually have a bunch of videos already done and ready to go. And I'm just, uh, it's just a matter of getting, getting them out. Because I do have, I got that. I got the new box from Warriors Tackle Supply. It's funny because they sent me a thing saying they never put anything in here that is in there. They try not to put anything in these boxes that is their own brand. Foreshadowing? I don't think that happens. Just saying. Okay. And last but not least, it's time to for me to tell you some great people to go check out. I've got a list. All right, there you go. I have a list of some great, great YouTube channels that I want you to go check out and subscribe to. They're, some are friends. I'm going to give you two that are friends that I tell you to subscribe to every week anyway. And then I'm going to give you two kind of secret hidden ones. One, One's just one that I like, to be honest. Of course, Warrior still does make their own line of baits. I don't know how good they are, but they still make them. But they were trying not to. I got in the the one of the videos of that we did where we com, I put all three against each other. They commented that they don't normally put their own baits in the in the box their boxes. But I got some of their stuff in the box, and I, I'm pretty sure there's some of it in that one. I'm just saying, if you say you're not going to do it, then then make sure you don't put it in there. Okay, here's some YouTube. Guys, you should go check out my boy Hank Snow Outdoors on YouTube. Now, here's why you should go watch it. He not only does some great unboxings, he goes fishing. He just he shoots you straight. There ain't and there isn't any mumbo jumbo and crap. He is honest and good. And you want to know he's to be honest, he's a pretty good angler too. So if you have some time, go check out Hank Snow Outdoors. You will be pleasantly surprised he's a small really small channel but he shouldn't be he should be getting more views just like i think we should be getting a lot more views for all the amount of time i spend doing these damn videos 
That's a whole, whole other situation. If you want to talk to me about that, you can talk to me later. Next, you see him on here all the time. I think that you should go check out his stuff. He's got some great fishing videos that he's just starting to do. But our boy Jason Beck Fishing. Go check him out. Great intro that he has. I enjoy the intro. And I also enjoy the fishing because he has, I think he wears the camera on his uh, chest. And he's just getting into the GoPro stuff. And you want to know it, he's he's out there trying to do it, trying to do something. And we need to support these, to support all these people that help support us. So Jason Beck Fishing. Next, this guy is quite honestly the smartest person I've ever met in my life. I'm not joking. Joking. I'm not joking. We had him on the show like a year and a half ago. His name's Jimmy Liao. And and honestly, Jimmy Liao is a flat out freaking genius. But his channel is called Fish Code Studios. That is Fish Code Studios. Here's why I think you should go. If you ever wanted to know the intricacies of how a bass reacts to a bait underwater in unbelievable slow motion. I mean, I can do my the slow motions I do are 240 frames a second. I think he is shooting to I think he's shooting 2000 frames a second. He's got a great video on how a frog, how a bass attacks a frog. You it this is a web, this is a YouTube page that you can learn so much from. It's ridiculous. So, Jimmy Liao, he and he I mean, the guy's got like two or three doctrines. Uh, he works for the University of Florida. He is unbelievable. He is stupid smart. And that's me being as as real as possible. The dude is flat out smart. Uh, he's a genius. I should You want to know, here's a little story. We had Jimmy on the show, and I was dumbfounded by how smart he was. And the, the little, little things that he knew about how a... a bass or a fish would react to a bait in the water he can tell you the intricacies and the youtube channel has that too and really he isn't a small channel he's a big channel but i thought it might be something you guys might not have seen because I, it, it, it's it's unbelievable anyway i saw we had jimmy on the show and you know the show goes by three hours on the radio goes by pretty fast you ask the questions you do all the stuff answer phone calls do all that stuff that goes on and then um you know we had i think we went out to breakfast or did something else I see him, I have this guy at the Classic two years ago, I think I was with Les, and as I'm walking up, this guy come, like, comes up to give me like a bro hug, and I'm like, you know, if you know me, I, I, don't, I can't be touched, I don't like to be touched, uh, this, is, this is my way of touching, bam, I will fist bump anybody, I'm not a toucher, I'm not a toucher, don't like it, anyway, came, and, and I had to look at, I gave Les the, the pure... He knew instantly. He, I could see, see him know the pure horror that was going through my head and the the all of the OCD issues I have. Anyway, I had to look over to him. He's like, uh, "You spell Jimmy's name is L I A O." But go look up Fish Code Sources, Fish Code, Fish Code Studios. Um, and and as it happened, I I. I looked over and he's like, that, you know him. He was on the radio. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay. And then, of course, I remembered him. And we've talked since. But great, fantastic channel. I mean, great, fantastic channel. Now, the last one isn't fishing. But you want to know what? In this time of all the craziness and just something just good, I thought you should go look at this one. The man's name is Stan Mills. He does Greater Yellowstone Grizzly Country walking tours uh i don't even like when people look at me either i'm i'm ugly so i don't like i'm big fat and ugly i don't want anybody looking at me anyway stan mills has the greater yellowstone grizzly country this guy goes out and walks in the craziest spots really calm collective the videos don't have a lot of talking to them but they're absolutely fantastic if you enjoy the outdoors 
because you're going to see grizzly bears, you're going to see moose, you're going to see bison, all the amazing animals that happen to be inside Yellowstone. And he has a, he actually doesn't, it isn't a real small, he's got five or 6,000 subscribers and he just started doing uh, videos on a more consistent basis. So if you're interested and you like that, like outdoor kind of stuff, like I do, not like I'm a hiker, but I've been out to Yellowstone so many times. I just think Yellowstone's the most beautiful place on the face of the earth. Um, so if you're interested, go check out Stan Mills and his YouTube channel. I'm going to try, I'm going to run a commercial for Mike, the new promo for that is the Edwin Evers hype thing. And I'm going to try to get a hold of Mike really fast. And if he is available, we'll talk to him. So let's do this. Let me put this on and we'll give you, we'll see you in a few seconds. Well, I couldn't get a hold of Mike, but that's just how it is. I hope you like that new video that they uh, that uh, we. I really don't have anything to do with it, but that uh, that Mike put had put together. Uh, JJ is a great did a great job with that. I'm really couldn't be more happy about that. We filmed we we followed Edwin while he was down here uh, on Toho for two straight days to to get that and more. So anyway. Um, we are in the process of doing some newer things. I've got some new stuff that we're, we're in the process of, of working out some bugs some fixes, and maybe even a, a studio that we're going to try to do these from on a more consistent basis, and then also be able to do the interviews that we want to. So, um, look for that. Also look for that. I'll, I'll be, maybe next week I can show you the new tackle web stuff that they have coming out. Uh, tackle webs has a new bag that, uh, not many people know about. I think only like a handful of us know about it great new bag and it's going to be it's priced perfect it's priced perfect so we'll uh maybe i can get i can get the approval from marcel and mike to talk about that and show you that new bag but as the new stuff comes out i'm going to try to just keep it for these wednesday shows i should say next week we're going to start doing these wednesday shows th these shows at 6 p.m six no actually we're doing them at 7 p.m because i'll be back from swimming here's the reason why lately i've had a hard time getting a hold of anglers because they don't want to, they want to do it live, but their three in, a, in the afternoon just doesn't work for them. So we're going to try to do uh, some more stuff. Yes, the rebrand is. I'll get into that in a second. Uh, so we're going to start to do these a little bit later because I think they'll be a little bit better attended. And 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 by all means, if you have a question, I'd love to to know. Just ask. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty open about almost everything. There's certain things I can't talk about. Um, the re like the rebrand we are in the process of rebranding and uh oh did mike talk about the backpack if you talked about the backpack then that, then i can't get in trouble mike has a new backpack uh tackle webs has an amazing uh backpack that's coming out he's gonna have it in two sizes 20 liters and 30 liters the 30 liters actually holds like four giant and i mean giant towels um it'll have a cup holder it's made of PVC, a roll up. You know those roll up plastic ones that are weatherproof. That's what it is. But they're, it's got a great look. But it's a backpack too. So we have, uh, he has those coming out. I guess they'll be out next week because I cast this next week. So be on the lookout for them. Um, it'll be, it'll, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Not to mention there's some other little things coming from uh, from Tackle Webs too. But like I was saying, as the new products come out, I'll try to do my best to get as much information so we can talk about them and I can show them to you on these live casts, these live from the Cossack uh, podcast or video podcast, however you want to call them. Uh, we'll continue the interviews here soon. Maybe I'll get Les to call in. I don't even know. Well, does anyone want Les to come in? 
Does anyone want Boudreaux to come? Now that answers the question already. Uh, but we'll have Mike for sure. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a blessed day. It's I tr- I was trying to. I've really been rushing this because I wanted to get this done in an hour. So this is great news. It's only three fifty five. I'm going to upload this to YouTube. If you have any questions, by all means, ask them. I'll do my best. If you need to get a hold of me, you can email me directly by any by all means. I don't mind going back. To be honest, I enjoy the conversation on YouTube as long as it isn't smart ass shitty comments. If you put that up, I'm probably going to ban you. I mean, I haven't had it recently, and I appreciate that. Because really, I'm too old for that. I'm not, I'm not one of these young Guggen kids that can, that's going to just spout out at the mouth. I'm going to tell it to you exactly how I feel. That's that's just how it is. Um, it, it just makes it, it it's easier. I mean, there's no sense in lying. We're all, we're all adults here, hopefully. Um, so, Les said, hey. Uh, so anyway, I hope you guys are having a blessed day. Uh, I hope that you guys catch a ton of fish. Remember, we have the Major League Fishing this week, so we'll talk about that next week. Maybe we can get the winner on. I'll I'll do my best to do that. I think they'll probably fish till Wednesday. Um, but we'll have we'll have somebody on here next week. We're, the interviews are going to start to start to happen a lot more because as the studio and other things get built, we start to m- build up what we have. What the goal has is is coming up. The show is going to have a big progression, a big jump. Um, got no time for that exactly. Uh, so I hope you guys have a blessed day. I hope you're able to get, go fishing, take a kid fishing, get your fish on. We will see you soon. See you next week. Later, guys.